Vicks, makers of Vicks Vatronol Nose Drops, presents Dangerously Yours, a half hour of romance and adventure starring Victor Jory in The Sheik. You know, more and more millions of people are using Vicks Vatronol Nose Drops to relieve distress of head colds, benefit by their experience. And now, Dangerously Yours. I am adventure. In my name, men have traversed the highways, the byways, the skyways of the world. I have walked with beggars, ridden with knights in armor, sailed with pirates. I am the fire that burns in the heart of youth, that makes men dream and dare and conquer. I am dangerously yours. Today, follow me to the deserts of Arabia. Meet a girl who was proud, beautiful, and young. And meet the man who was determined to conquer her. A prince among all Arabs and in the eyes of all women. The Sheik! Beside the Shalimar, where are you now? Where are you now? Ah, that is beautiful, Effendi. Thank you. You are sure about the girl, Gaston? I could not be mistaken, my master. She is the daughter of Dr. Winthrop, and she rides her horse this way every afternoon. And the fates are smiling on me. And I shall have the revenge I promised my father I would take. Wait until you see her. Such beauty, such lips, such eyes, such hair. Sacre bleu, what an armful she will make. I'm not interested in her beauty. I can get a thousand beautiful women without going to the trouble of stealing them. Ah, but not like her. I'm only interested in making her suffer. The way her father made me suffer. Oh, master, look. I think I see her. Yes, that is she. I recognize her horse. Good. I shall ride out to meet her. Good afternoon. It's not necessary that you should. Come, I think you will ride easy on... My horse is my arm. Stop! Put me down. Oh, oh, you little fool. Oh, it's go. useless to struggle. Let me go, you hear me? Let me go. <laughs> Not a chance, Miss Winthrop. Oh. I've waited too long for this moment. This tent is your home. I hope you'll find it worthy. It's rather nice, don't you think? Are these two hanging lamps or a gift from the Shah of Persia? I'm not interested in your lamps. I'm still waiting for an explanation of all this. <laughs> Do you always ask so many questions? I think you must have asked a hundred for every mile of our journey. And you told me nothing. That was because you fought and screamed. You're calm now, so what would you like to know? I demand to know why you dragged me from my horse and brought me here. I demand to know what you want. Why, your company, of course. What else? Uh, don't you think that tapestry is attractive? It was made by a hundred slave women in Baghdad, and it took them eleven years. Those silken curtains around your bed over there came from Paris. And the bed itself is over a thousand years old. Very interesting. But I'm more interested in you. Who are you? I am the chief Ahmed Ben Hassan. Why have you brought me here? Perhaps because you're beautiful. You see, I've never seen a woman with skin so soft or so fair or hair so silken or lips so red. I wondered what it would be like to touch that skin to kiss those lips. And so I brought you here to find out. You always carry off anyone who attracts you? Always. Well, you've carried off the wrong girl this time. Look, my friend, let's not play games. Just let me have my horse and let me go. Why, what's your hurry? You just got here. You surely are not stupid enough to think you can keep me here against my will. My family and my friends are no doubt searching for me right now. I'll never find you. We're far in the desert. It's not easy to find an Arab tribe out here if the tribe doesn't want to be found. You have everything figured out, haven't you? I always have everything figured out. Now get out of those riding breeches and dress for dinner. You'll find a gown, a very lovely Paris gown there on the bed. Are you completely insane? Do you think I, I'd dress for dinner for you? Perhaps you'd like me to dress you. Oh! Oh, 
Oh, I really think you'll do it. You can be sure I will if it's necessary. So I would expect you in half an hour dressed for dinner. You'll find me in the next tent. Uh, don't keep me waiting. Till then. Oh, you, you conceited, arrogant. She is very beautiful, is she not, my master? She is more beautiful than any woman I've ever seen in my life. What uh, are you going to do with her? I'm going to make love to her. I'm going to hurt her and humiliate her in every way I can. I'm going to take all the pride out of her and send her back. I feel a little sorry for her. She did not do anything to you. She is not to blame for what... Her father could have saved my mother's life when she was ill. My father, who never bowed to any man, got down on his knees and begged Dr. Winthrop to come into the desert to treat her. But he refused. My mother died. My father made me take an oath in blood that I would avenge my mother's death. And I'm going to avenge her. How sad it is that you must hate her when it would be so much nicer to love her. Love makes a man soft and weak. It is not for the strong. I love no woman. I have no time for love. You haven't eaten much dinner. I'm not hungry. You could hardly expect me to be. I don't know why not. You've been riding all day. I'm starved. You look very lovely. That dress does things to you. If I ever get away from you, I'll burn it. By that time, it will be old enough to burn. You know, you not only walk like a leopard, you also have the disposition of one. I have a few words that would describe you, too. But a lady doesn't say them aloud. What I said was a compliment. Did you ever see a leopard walk? It's slow and graceful. You've noticed, I suppose, that it's always safest to admire a leopard from a distance. Yes, and you will notice that I have little thought for safety. Come. Come with me. Is that a command? Only if you're going to be arbitrary. How is it that a desert sheep speaks perfect English? I was educated in England, at Oxford. Indeed? One would think you might have learned some manners there. There are certain things about Arabs that even England can't change. Come with me. Oh, well. I suppose I have no other choice. No, you have not. Come. It's a beautiful night, isn't it? It might be, in better company. The desert under the moon is beautiful. I've always loved it. No. Ah, but, my dear, you cannot love the desert unless you've loved an Arab. Look at this sand. Hold it against your cheek. See, it is still warm. We have a saying among our people... I will love you until the sands grow cold. Where is that music coming from? Some of my men are playing. That's one of my favorite songs. Do you know it? Yes. It's the Kashmiri song, a Hindu song. And a sad one. You're very quiet. What are you thinking? I was thinking how much I hated you. You're lying, Diane. You couldn't be thinking that. Not under these stars listening to that music. Your eyes are more tender than your words. And your heart is warm. Don't and flatter how yourself. how soft your skin Take is. your hand off. And your lips are like crushed roses as smooth as velvet under mine. Stop! Diane. Do you make love very clumsily? I've never been kissed by a sheep before. I don't particularly care if I never am again. You little devil, I'll tame you. Put me down, put me down. No, my dear, not yet. You'll know a lot more about the kisses of a sheik before I put you down. Pardon, mademoiselle. Uh, <clears throat> uh, pardon, mademoiselle, but it is almost noon I have your breakfast here. Uh, good morning, mademoiselle. Good morning. Oh, who are you? Uh, I am Gaston, Miss Diane. I am valet and cook to the Sheikh Ahmed Ben Hassan. I uh, have brought you your breakfast. Thank you. Good morning. Get out of here. I'm not accustomed to men servants or sheiks walking into my bedroom. But you're very young. You'll get over that. Gaston. Yes, Effendi. Mademoiselle might enjoy a ride this afternoon. 
If so, you will accompany her and see that she does not go more than three miles from camp. Yes, sir, thank you. That's very generous of you, I'm sure. Well, I'll be away all day. You'll have to have some amusement while I'm gone. Uh, you look lovely this morning. Did you spend the night dreaming about me? I spent the night dreaming about how to get away from you. Oh, uh, you'll get over that, too. I'm going out to break a coat. If you'd care to watch how I handle rebels, come along. No, thank you. Just as you like. You may ride this afternoon if Gaston goes with you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Master! Master! The girl is gone. Diane is gone. What do you mean she's gone? What happened? We were riding... She said she wanted to rest. I dismounted to help her down, and she whipped my horse and rode off by herself. You mean she left you alone in the desert on foot? Oh, that I do not mind, Effendi. But she is alone and helpless and riding straight toward the camp of Ibrahim Omer. <sighs> and if she falls into his hands, sacre bleu... My kinsman and ancient enemy will be well pleased to see her. The little fool. Run, Gaston, call yes. the men. Have them saddle the horses at once. Yes, Effendi. Uh, what horse is she riding? Your favorite, Zulika. Fastest in the desert. Well, she'll, she'll have to stop to rest, and with luck, we'll catch up with her. Come on! Master, I see her. Look, a white horse. It is Zulika. Yes, that is she. We're in luck. Stay with the men, Gaston. I'll ride ahead and get her. Diane, stop! Diane, stop! You little fool, stop, I tell you! Are you... are you hurt? No. Oh, you fool, you, you little fool. Oh, is Zuleika dead? Yes, my Zuleika is dead. That was my favorite horse. I loved her more than I could love a human being, and I killed her to save you. Save me? What do you mean? You were riding straight for the tents of my greatest enemy. And though at this moment I would like to kill you myself, I would not let Omer get his hands on you. I would not let that happen to the most miserable of women under my protection. She was a beautiful animal. I didn't think you'd kill her. I never make a threat I don't intend to keep. You hate me, don't you? Well, I'm not overly fond of you at the moment. Come on, we'd better start back. What are you going to do to me? I'm going to send you back to civilization where you belong. I think you've seen enough of the desert. And I know the desert has seen enough of you. You've been begging and pleading to get back. Well, you shall have your wish. And that's your cue to say, I hate you. Oh, no. That's my cue to say, I'm sorry. In just a moment, we will bring you the second act of The Sheep. Now, here's a warning to you folks who are suffering from late summer head colds that cause such all-over misery. To relieve the sniffly, sneezy, stuffy distress, just put a few drops of vatronol in each nostril. It brings such grand comfort so fast and so direct. You can actually feel vatronol go to work right where trouble is as it quickly reduces swelling, soothes irritation, and helps relieve nasal congestion to make breathing easier. Vatronol is a specialized medication, friends, made for the express purpose of relieving the distress of head colds. And if your nose is stuffed up at bedtime, a few drops of Vatronol invite restful sleep. Try it. And keep a bottle handy, ready to use promptly when you catch a head cold. Follow directions in the folder. Vic Vatronol Nose Drops. And now, the second act of Dangerously Yours, starring Victor Jory in The Sheep. Don't stop. 
You have a beautiful voice. Oh, I, I'm afraid I have no heart for singing tonight. Is there anything I can say that will make you forgive me for the death of Zuleika? The horse is dead and the past is past. Let us forget it. I don't blame you for despising me, but if you hadn't brought me out here, it wouldn't have happened. Ahmed, why did you bring me? No, I don't quite know. I was a little drunk with your beauty, I guess. And not thinking very clearly. I wish it had been because you loved me. I could have respected that. If I had, I think that this evening when I caught you that I would have killed you. Come, get your things together. Gaston and the men will be coming. You're sending me away tonight? Yes. I'm sending along an escort of 40 men. They'll take you to the edge of town. Gaston will see you safely to your hotel. I put on the dress you liked. You haven't even noticed. Um, that look at Diane, me. let's understand each other. I carried you off because you were beautiful and I wanted you. Now I'm sending you back. I don't want you anymore. Why are you saying these things? Ahmed, what is it? Don't tell me you hate me just because I tried to escape. It's deeper and more bitter than that. Why did you bring me here? I've told you. I'm not satisfied with your reason. It's a stupid reason, and you're far from a stupid man. Ahmed, tell me. I have a right to know. Ahmed, you've done a terrible thing to me. A terrible thing? Yes. Because, you see, I've fallen in love with you. I never wanted love. I was happy as I was until you kissed me. What right did you have to kiss me? To storm your way to my heart and then say, forget me. How can I leave and never be happy again? What right do you have to do that to me? The right any man has to cast aside something he has looked upon and found unworthy. Oh, please, Ahmed, that's not fair. Why don't you tell me the truth? Why did you bring me here? All right, I'll tell you. I brought you here because I hate your family. Your father could have saved my mother's life and he refused to do it. And I swore by Allah that some member of the Winthrop family would pay for it. I plotted this from the time you came to the desert. I carried you off and made love to you, knowing all the time I was going to cast you aside, and I did it deliberately to humiliate you. That's why I brought you here. Love you. Why, I could love any woman in the world before I could love you. But it's true. So, I'm unworthy of you. Well, let me tell you something. You're a fine, brave man, aren't you, Sheikh Ahmed ben Hassan? You exact a stern vengeance. A vengeance which breaks the heart of a woman. Well, you won your vengeance. I hope you consider it a proud victory. I'll wait in my tent until Gaston comes for me. And the sooner the better. Mademoiselle rushed right by me and did not see me. She was so angry. You were a bit hard on her, my master. I could not uh, help overhearing. You attend to your own business, Gaston. I was only three miles from home when she left me. It did not hurt me to walk. Uh, I am too fat anyhow. Uh, and you killed the horse yourself. It is not fair to blame her for that. Gaston, I seriously consider hanging you by your thumbs. I should be very uncomfortable hanging by my thumbs. Then keep quiet. But, Effendi, you accomplished your purpose. You humiliated her. Her pride is gone. It is completely gone. Yes. I accomplished my purpose. On the other hand, I knew a man once who cut off his nose. He was never happy without it. Oh, go and get ready. And the quicker you get that girl out of this camp, the happier I'll be. You know what I think? I think you love her. Get out of here, you. Get out of here. How foolish love can make a wise man. Get out of here! Ready to leave. Yes. Diane, I... I suppose there's no use trying to explain... Explain? You explained yourself quite fully. But I was just talking words. I thought I meant them, but... I didn't. Oh, Diane, can't you see that I... I've fallen in love with you. I wish I could believe that. Oh, I wish I could believe it. I'd get twice the pleasure out of riding away and leaving you. Goodbye. And I hope I never see you again. I don't think you ever will. Goodbye. All right, men. On your way. (laughs) 
Gaston, what is it? Uh, Gaston! Good heaven, man, you're covered with blood. What happened? We we were attacked by the men of Ibrahim Omer. Attacked? Yes, and they carried her off. The girl. There were at least a hundred of them. You must do something, Effendi. You must save the girl. Ali, Hassan, yes, sir. Yes, Sound the alarm. We ride for the tents of Omer. Faster, men. Faster. There's no time to lose. Come on. Faster. Faster. Well, my pretty one. So you're the English woman my kinsman, the Sheikh Ahmed, stole from her people. Well, you are even more exciting to look upon than I had been told. And you're just as repulsive as I'd expect you to be. What? You're not afraid to talk to me like that? I could snap your neck with one twist of my fingers. See? Like this. Yes. Well, at this moment, I don't care if you do. See? My kinsman, the great fool, must have made you unhappy. I shall make him suffer for that. And I, personally, shall make you much happier. Get away from me, you fat clown. Get away from me. Now come to me, my little pigeon. Do not flutter around like that. I do not wish to chase you. Stay away from me, you filthy beast. So you defy me. Well, I have a cure for that. I have my... To arms! There are many horsemen coming! To arms! It's Ahmed. Oh, dear God, please, it must be Ahmed. I hope it is. Ahmed! 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 Keep still or I will choke the words in your throat. Diane! Diane! Take your hands off your dog. Take your hands off. Ahmed, you're choking him to death. Ahmed. He'll never bother you again. Ahmed, look behind you. Ahmed. Well, Sheikh Ahmed bin Hassan, it seems we must settle a score for our master, eh? Come on. Ahmed. Ahmed. Gaston, he's so still. He won't die, will he? Gaston, he won't die. I do not think so, mademoiselle. But he's so white. I'm frightened. He's only stunned, mademoiselle. It was a blow on the head. Water. Water. See? He's all right. Heal my master. Oh, Gaston, I love him so much. I can't help myself. I know, mademoiselle. I wish I could believe that he loves me. He risked his life for you tonight, mademoiselle. Yes. He almost gave his life. Diane... Diane. Yes, darling, I'm here. Oh, Ahmed, Ahmed, I love you. I love you so much. Oh, my darling, my darling. You're all right, Diane. Yes, dear, I'm all right. You won't leave me, will you? No. I'll stay as long as you want me to. As long as you need me. I'm sorry, Diane. I mean, I'm sorry about everything. You weren't to blame for what your father did. I think there's something you should know about my father. You see, Ahmed, he was the only doctor in this country for a long time. Perhaps your father never told you there was an epidemic of typhus in the town at the time. And if he'd left, it might have meant many deaths. I know because he told me the story before he died. He always regretted losing your father's friendship. Oh, I'm glad to know that, Diane. And I'm not going to ask you to forgive me. I haven't any right to forgiveness. Darling, there's nothing to forgive, I understand. And I love you. I want to marry you and stay with you. Stay with you always. Oh, my dearest. Once, when I was not in love with you... I would have said, stay because I'm lonely. But now I cannot let you stay. You'd be unhappy here. The life we lead is no life for a woman like you. Ahmed, you're wrong. This is just the life for someone like me. 
You went to England, but you came back to the desert because you loved it. And so I choose it, too. I came to the desert because something stronger than myself drew me here. And I belong here just as much as you do. Don't send me away. You've shown me great happiness. Don't take it away from me. Oh, you'll have a devil for a husband. You know my temper. I may even beat you. Arabs do beat their wives on occasion. I can take care of myself. You'll get a few scratches if you try it. <laughs> and you'll love me more than you'll beat me. Oh, yes, that is certainly true. I will love you more than I'll beat you. And, of course, I do insist on one thing. Yeah? You will have only one wife. It is a custom in our country. Only one wife? One? Only one. Not even an extra one? For... Not one extra. Do you think you can be all to me that 60 wives could be? I'll try. I'm sure you will. Oh, darling. I'm very grateful that you love me and want to stay. Much as I have loved the desert, I don't know that I could go on loving it without you. Listen. Someone else is singing our song. Let someone sing it now. That's a sad song, and I have no longer any need for it. Or even time for it. With you in my arms. Oh, darling. Don't be one of those women who are carelessly throwing away their natural youthfulness simply because they fail to live sensibly and get enough of certain indispensable vitamins and iron. Don't you pay that needless penalty. Just live sensibly and take Vitamins Plus once each day. Vitamins Plus gives you full protective amounts of all the certain indispensable vitamins and iron you must have to feel and look as young and vitally alive as you should. So be sure to make it your health charm routine. Vitamins Plus, just once each day. I am Adventure. Next week, meet a man who was both daring lover and brilliant maid, one of the most exciting men of his day, Benvenuto Cellini, the firebrand. Until next week, then... I am dangerously yours. Our script was written by Gene Holloway from the novel The Sheik by E.M. Hull. Dangerously Yours was directed by Richard Sandville. Diane was played by Gertrude Warner. Music for the series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Be sure and listen in again next week when Vix presents Dangerously Yours... Starring Victor Jory in The Firebrand. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.